Hello, everybody. Peter Beckett, I'm the Village Marketer. And today I have a very special guest for you, Sherry Bennett. Hello there, Sherry. Hi, Peter. Lovely to talk with you again. Lovely to talk Hi. to you as well. And the reason I want to talk to you is because I've got something buzzing around in my head, right? And it's, it's all to do with medical cannabis. And you are a medical cannabis educator, correct? I am, yes. By merely mentioning that word medical cannabis, probably people watching this video think, oh my goodness me, that's not for me. And that's the point of my question to you. If medical cannabis is a viable medical option, then is it right that the problem with the product is not what it does, but the fear and stigma that are associated with the name cannabis. And if that is true, it's just the fear and stigma of the name cannabis, then how best can we overcome that? Because my understanding is that medical cannabis is an incredible way to overcome this other hopeless thing they've got now called the opioid addiction. Yes. Over to yes. you, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, thank you for asking. That's a very important question. Yes, uh, patients face a constellation of obstacles, but one of the big barriers is fear and stigma. Unfortunately, because of the uh, information that we were all taught, um, it was incorrect information. And, and frankly, uh, people are frightened uh, because the laws uh, were so strict in prohibiting people from even talking about cannabis. And um, I believe that through education um, that, the, you know, people are learning that um, it's, it's, not a, it's not to be feared. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very important uh, medical treatment, for sure. Yeah, the stigma is, is still huge. People are afraid to talk. Sometimes when I started out, this people were afraid to open their email addresses, if I, you know, or open my emails if it had the word cannabis in it, for instance. Mm. And that's changing. But mm -hmm. I, uh, I think the only remedy for that is for people to to listen to others uh, that have stories, uh, you know, of, of hope and healing, and also um, to listen to others with lived experience. So. I know well-meaning uh, doctors and and professionals are, are are trying really hard now to understand the medical science because uh, many people are coming forward. Highly educated professionals, well-functioning uh, people now are starting to talk about their own experience with medical cannabis okay. on podcasts, for instance. Um, so my favorite podcast, by the way, is called... Uh, the conversation, cannabis and Christianity. So in that, on that platform, Miguel Torres, the host, interviews fascinating people, professionals, CEOs of cannabis companies, uh, indigenous people, uh, people that are doctors, cannabis doctors, cannabis lawyers, and once again, well-functioning professionals that have been taking cannabis uh, to treat uh, a whole wide range of, of conditions. Okay, so let me get this right. As far as medical cannabis is concerned, is it no more addictive than like things like tea and coffee? Am I correct in thinking that? Yes, you are correct in thinking that. And the most important thing is to to realize that cannabis does not come with the risk of life-threatening addiction or lethal overdose. Unlike opioid medications and uh, benzodiazepines, which, you know, well-meaning doctors prescribe them for mm. chronic pain and sleep disruption. Mm. Uh, but I, we know now with certainty, we have the evidence that cannabis does not kill. Okay. And cannabis actually has a safety profile of plus 6,000 years. So okay. we, yeah. we have the evidence and, and we, have, we have the data. Apart from fear and stigma associated with the term cannabis, I'm thinking there's also maybe some pushback from the people who don't want to be perceived as a smoker. Okay? Right. But right. am I correct in saying 
you don't need to smoke medical cannabis to achieve the benefits of it? Yes, that's true. You don't need to. Uh, what many can you do? People, well, many people um, are choosing to, to vaporize the dried plant flower, for instance. So they have vaporizers like this one, for instance. This is a, a little uh, portable vaporizer. And when one vaporizes dried flower, um, you don't get the burned plant matter into your lungs like you would if you smoke it. Okay. And vaporized cannabis actually comes with 95% smoke and carcinogen free. So um, there's, you know, other methods of consumption. One can have uh, little gel caps, for instance. I don't know if you can oh, see okay. this. Yeah, I can little see tiny it. Tiny gel caps or um, oil sublingually under the tongue. You know, right. so, and we can add this to food. There are many different consumption um, methods. Right. So transdermal patches, for instance, you know, for for kids that have autism. Okay, so instance. patches and drops and things. You don't have to smoke the damn stuff, right, to get no. the benefit. No, there are so many other is, ways to consume it. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. So it's one, it's no more addictive than tea and coffee. And two, you don't have to smoke it anyway, right? right. And that, That's to right. me seems to be some of the biggest challenges people are facing and trying to overcome in their mind when it comes to medical cannabis. And if sure. that's the case, they need to talk to people like you because you're a medical cannabis expert, a medical cannabis educator. And yes. what would be the best way for them to contact you? Well, through my website, which is called letstalkcannabis.ca. Uh, it's a Canadian educational platform with lots of really good education and information. Excellent. Let, let's talk cannabis.ca. That's right. Okay. Thank you very much, Sherry, for your sharing your valuable time. And thank you for answering my probably ignorant questions, but they probably are questions in many other people's minds as well. Yes, they are, I'm sure. Thank you so very much, Peter. Thank you. Okay. Thank you thank very you. much.